Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. We have another smash tasting for you. We talk uh, about these beers I brew with uh, one hop, a single hop, and a single malt. We don't really talk about the malt all that much, but the hops we definitely talk about. And uh, the variety we are exploring in this video is a French hop variety Leave called the French. Barbe, Barbe Rouge, which uh, translates to uh, red beard. Did you know that? I'm glad you said it, not me. <laughs> and uh, this is from Yakima Valley Hops. It's uh, the uh, 2019 pellets, 9.3% uh, alpha acids. And uh, I brought the, uh, the pouch over here because Mike um, thinks that pellet, hop pellets smell like hop pellets. But when I open up, and maybe it's not as, it, there's a little bit something different. There's something this, different. In this variety. So, just to go over what we do, this is a one gallon batch, US gallon. And I take uh, two pounds of malt. I believe this is, uh, this is uh, American pale malt. Mm -hmm. So two pounds of American pale malt. I mash that for 60 minutes at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I boil for 60 minutes. I, I collect two gallons of wort and then boil for 60 minutes. And then I add hops during different points of the boil. Generally with these, you know, tasty kind of fruity hops, I, what I do is do a lot of late additions. And so the additions that went into this beer, uh, a little smidge went in at 15 minutes to go in the boil, about, uh, f so that was seven grams. 14 grams went in at flame out, and then I reserve another seven grams to be put in um, at dry hopping. Typically, it, this was at the day three of fermentation, and I let it ferment for 10 total days. So this has been in contact, that, that last dry hop, in contact for yeah. seven days, which I'm wondering if I should do it even later, like for like just uh, three days or whatever. But that's, that's uh, you know, for another video, I guess, that we're talking about this beer. So um, with one, with one malt and one hop, what we're trying to do is to get a better sense of what this particular hop is all about. I did see this variety in some article about like 10 hops you should, you know, get to know, you know, in 2020 or 2021 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So here we are, and there's going to be more French hops on the way because yeah. I bought a whole bunch of varieties yeah. from that article. So this is the first oh, one. Awesome. And this one I thought had potential from the descriptors. Because they said like it's a good one for New England IPAs, and uh, I'd like to hear what you think. Well, first off, first impression wise, I mean, I think this hop can stand alone. This is pretty interesting flavor wise in of itself. Right? Okay. Even at the these hopping rates, I'm I'm really digging the flavor profile. But the flavor profile is this is another one that's like not screaming out at me a specific given flavor but i will say that but it's unique and it's very enjoyable what i get you're gonna think i'm totally crazy but <laughs> i get like a uh, at first the the at first there is sort of like a floral like a a floral but citrus thing like orange blossom almost right there's there, it's that but i but flavor wise it, it's hard to pin it's not like um, it doesn't really taste like an orange juice or a grapefruit juice, but I, what I get is sort of like a, maybe like a muted, like a rounder, like a blackberry, but without the acidity, I get, um, a little bit of like, actually on the aftertaste, I actually get like this avocado <laughs> oil type of now you're crazy. sense, right? Yep. It just, there's something almost like banana, but not with that ester quality right so um but then the more i drank it the more i sipped it for some reason avocado is just a, a right there in my mind with it <laughs> but it's not like guacamole it's it's no. just it's just like that you know freshly cut smell it um you know unsalted avocado yeah, right yeah. just plain avocado which doesn't have much of a taste or flavor right, right. but it's very it has, subtle it's very, it's very subtle, subtle. Yep. um um the bitterness is smooth yeah. There's no uh, dry, lingering hop bite from the late hopping, dry hopping aspect of it, which yep. I really like, as everyone who watches the channel knows. <laughs> um, so I find it pretty, it's very pleasant, but it's it's sort of um, uh, nondescript. 
at first I wanted to say like like somewhere in between a tangerine and a peach in there, but it's it's not. No, it's, it's, it's not. hard to yep. pin it. Now you're gonna give me the legit descriptors, and I'm gonna go, oh yeah, I, I taste the lime leaf, you know. But, um, <laughs> um, but I don't know. No, I think that it's it's funny the the things that they list in this description um, are ones that I feel like are mild or delicate flavors uh -huh. okay so i think that uh what we can start off with is ripe red fruit um maybe a current strawberry raspberry i mean raspberry to me is is strong but like so strawberry. that's what i get with the blackberries if you if you can mm. taste the black some some blackberries don't have the acidic bite yeah. sometimes like if they're really mellow or yes. really overly ripened yes that's what you just is. get like this you know almost like blackberry jam Yes. Doesn't it, right? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what I get a yep. little bit. So About it's the sweetness, in that berry yeah. category. Sure. All right, I'll, I'll score a point for myself there. <laughs> I think that when you said blackberry, I'm like, good, you're in yeah. the berry. That's where it is. It's, yeah. it's in a berry category. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I did want to say, like, with the avocado thing, I was actually thinking, the word just came back to me. There is, like, so, like, underripe, like an underripe guava thing in there. Yep, right? okay. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to get that in in case, in case yes. guava came yeah, up. Yeah, I want to make sure like, I got ding, that ding, on the board. Got it, yeah. got that on the Got that one. Um, it also offers zesty citrus aromas of oranges and limes. So there's your lime leaf. Um, while some people describe a unique kumquat character. Oh, yeah. Those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting idea. I mean, I did say orange blossom. I was in that camp. Yep. No, um, it's very light. Like, if citrus yeah. does not come to mind when I drink this. Not strongly. I mean, it. Uh, I think because we're, we're doing a hop evaluation, uh, like your brain, it's really hard to tell your brain, okay, suppress what you know. Yeah. And don't just jump right into the citrus part of the wheel. Yep. I think we all, especially being Americans drinking, we just, boom. Okay, is it grapefruit? Is it orange? Is it lemon? Yeah. Right? Yep. That's where you got to start with these and go, eh, sort of. But then it's really hard to get that out of your brain. Yep. Right? To yep. then, what am I really tasting? Unless there's something that's really hitting you over the head. So um, that's why I say it's, it's sort of, there's a really nice, delicate bouquet, which is more of like florally, it's just subtle. Like an orange blossom isn't like, whoa, it smells like an orange, but no. it's just, you know, it's, it's delicate. Sort of yeah. citrusy there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's it. And I mean, they, they say like, you know, well suited for American IPAs, uh, New England IPAs, yeah. um, pale ales. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, what this, it, it's one that you blend. I yeah. mean, I know that you're saying this goes great. I think as a, as a New England pale ale, forget the IPA thing, where you really want to drive bigger character, th just this beer as it is, yeah. this would be great. Yeah, it's good. Um, if I was going to pair it with something, and I've said this before, if I was going to pair this with something, another hot vice, yeah, I bet Sabro in this yes. would That's a good really one. well. That's a good one. Right? Yep. I agree. Yeah. I agree. As it warms up, I'm getting a little more orange on the yep. aftertaste. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I was interested. And then the reason why I thought this would be a good one to start with all the, the new varieties I bought over the last couple of weeks um, was that this one seemed to have a lot of um, the berry uh, descriptors. Yep, yep. Uh, I think that we have had these kinds of hop rice before. They're hard to pick out. Sometimes it's kind of just fruit, uh, but this one is uh, is one to try if you can find it. I think that this would be yeah. a good one to add to um, one of your new brews that you're it about to do. It would certainly fill in a lot of gaps in your flavor profile. Yeah, I think true that. Be, yeah, yeah, but do it in a smash format or at least single hop yep. and see, that's gonna be incredibly enjoyable. Do a half batch with it, a single hop, and then figure out where in your recipes you would like to insert this, because I think it would pair well with a lot of stuff. And with the, the, the alpha acids under 10%, now I don't know if the 2020 batch or uh, yeah. crop has a higher, but I think even like what I did research, I think the range is like seven to 10. Yeah. I would think that even if you wanted to put a small amount at the beginning of the boil, gets a little bit more bitterness to it. I yeah. bet you could do a nice um, one hop pale ale and just uh, evaluate it that way in a, in a larger yeah. format for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's what we got. I love it. Red Beard, uh, Bob Rouge. Um, so uh, if you're if you're into that kind of thing, uh, check it out. Try to find it. Uh, I know that um, where I bought it was uh, Yakima Valley Hops, but probably at a homebrew store near you. 
And if not, you can ask them to uh, buy it for you. Yeah. And then you can buy it from them. Tell them we sent you. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, subscribe to our channel. Like this video if you dug it. And uh, we try to do this every week. Regina Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.